So this is where we're at guys, uh, we've split the case, so if you don't know what you're actually looking at, this is the bottom of your crankshaft here, and your pistons go up in through there, I'll get a light, <clears throat> show you, as you can see, that's your base of your piston down in there, there are your con rods, this is your big end, crankshaft, there's your chain on the end, now in here is where your gearbox actually sits, above here your oil pump sits, but here's your gearbox so this is clutch side this is sprocket side that nut is still on there I've got to pull that off but as you can see here this is how it works constant mesh constant mesh gears when you down here is your selector I don't know if you can see that if you flick that across it'll knock one of these across which will engage it into the slots on the gear here as you can see the slots in there which engages it into gear hence why you don't really do any damage to your transmission when you do clutchless shifting provided you do it correctly these will just slot in and lock you drop a load off the transmission it's nice and loose you reapply a load again you reapply a load again and it locks back up again drop load these can move freely side to side you reload it back up again it locks that is why you can actually get away with clutch or shifting on a motorcycle but this is pretty much where we've come to now if you if you pull this out here and sit that I'll get you to hold on to that down in here you've got your selector fork which actually runs what's that one like that one's not too bad all will do, so I'll get that these set of gears and I'll put them back in. When you're actually lining them up, you're gonna make sure the selector fork is running on this journal in the, in the center here. Make sure that's actually running. Obviously when this goes back together, you have dowels. You have dowels up in there and that will actually lock it, your little locking pins, and it will make it sit all correctly. But this is the issue we've got. We'll pull this one out. Just set that aside. I've checked the gears. Now, if you actually look in here, you can see this is your selector for. Apart from the actual selector rod, which is broken. completely sheared off and broken, started to damage his case a little bit. If you actually look around the side there, it started damaging the case. That's also, you can see your selector, your selector fork there. He's actually started to shear off and I dare say this is what his issue has been with going into gear and jumping gear and throwing gear and all that sort of stuff so mm. this isn't really technical guys it isn't really technical to do this sort of stuff you just gotta bear in mind you need special tools you will need to take your time and it's one of those things I have a background with this so I'm, it's pretty much pretty simple for me to do but if you're going to try and tackle this at home, just bear in mind. And that's pretty much it. Now, it's time to change the transmission. Time to swap out what we need to swap out and start putting it back together. All good. <laughs> I got dragged into this. <laughs> I got dragged into this. I didn't want to do it, but oh well, I'm here now, so I might as well do it. Yeah.